I, I need to tell you, this is all you need to know about me, is that I live next to a golden corral. <laughs> it's kind of my vibe. <laughs> I watch that golden corral, I study it. They put a drive through in at the golden corral by my house. Yeah, can you believe that? I've been sad before, but... <laughs> I haven't been Golden Corral drive through sad. <laughs> they need to put a social worker at the entrance just to check in on people. <laughs> you don't have to do this. There are people who love you. <laughs> a drive through That means they want you to say your buffet order out loud. <laughs> to another person. I've never been that vulnerable with anyone in my whole life. I'm not mature enough to admit my buffet order to myself when I'm in the buffet. I just get my plate and I black out for five minutes. And I wake up at my table, I'm like, I guess this is who I am on the inside. <laughs> Even when I'm done, I put napkins over my plate just so the waitress doesn't know my shame. I feel bad for the person that has to work the drive-thru at Colton Corral. Just all day listening to buffet orders. Just going, welcome to Golden Corral. Okay, slow down, buddy. You want what? Mash, mashed potatoes and ice cream? Together? You know, I gotta tell you, it's just part of my training that those are gonna melt into each other. Oh, that's what you like. Okay. Well, no judgment. Sweet and savory. I get it. And you want chocolate cake? Okay. Yeah, I'll try and not get gravy on it. All of a sudden, you're picky. Oh, the cake's for your birthday. Woof. Happy, happy birthday, Rogers. <laughs> I don't, I try not believe in conspiracy theories, but here's one I want to get started. <laughs> I think Golden Corral is trying to get the old people inside of it just to slow down the all you can eat process. <laughs> inside Golden Corral, it feels like what you do to your grandparents when you can't afford a nursing home. You just send them into Golden Corral. $11.99 a day. We'll take care of them. Some, everything they do in Golden Corral is to attract Old people, they got everything set up like a nursing home. They got the schedule of what food is gonna be served on what day. <laughs> they got Friday's fish and Saturday's oriental night. We know no one else says that word, but you do, so come on in. <laughs> Corral is such a good name for that place. <laughs> It's meant for people who've been put out to pasture a long time ago. <laughs> Just gotta put out troughs for them to eat in so they don't graze out in the wild. <laughs> you seen old people in the wild? It's bananas. They need to be in the corral. <laughs> old people waste so much time, it's unbelievable. I'm always blown away. I'm like, you have the least amount of time left. <laughs> Why are you wasting all of it? They have these things they do where they'll, they'll like order food that's not even on the menu. They, they're like, I want an egg salad sandwich. And the person's like, this is Panda Express. <laughs> I don't think it's true that old people move to like Florida or a nursing home when they get older. They move in front of you in line. That's where they live. <laughs> They're never behind you. You're never like, oh good, that old guy that's about to order grits in this Wendy's is behind me in line. <laughs> that happened to me once. 
This old guy was in front of me. He got up to the counter and he's like, I want grits. And the kid at the counter is like, we don't have grits. So the old man, he just waited. That's your move when you're old. His attitude is like, look, I want grits and I'm on the brink of death. I'm willing to turn out the clock on this one. Your move, compadre. You gotta get that guy grits now. He's willing to go down at your Wendy's counter. You gotta go to Cracker Barrel and fill a frosty cup full of grits. You gotta make it happen. And the crazy part is that it worked. Can you believe, he, five minutes later, he got Wendy's grits. It was like some loaves and fishes style miracle. From the spirit of Dave Thomas. And he took the grits and he didn't say thank you, of course. And then he pulled out his checkbook. <laughs> he wasn't done wasting everyone's time. He had only just begun. <laughs> he paid for the food that didn't exist in the first place with the form of payment on the brink of extinction. If you're paying with a checkbook in public, you're one step away from paying with a Blockbuster gift card. <laughs> Thanks for listening to my rant. <laughs> no, I appreciate you coming and, and listening. I don't take it for granted. I, I like it. I like, I like listening. People complain about listening, which I don't get. They're like, the government is listening to everything that you do. And I'm like, good, I could use the followers. <laughs> Maybe I'll get some fans. <laughs> Like, I try and not believe in conspiracy theories, but I totally understand where people that believe in them are coming from, you know? I get it. I'm also mentally ill. <laughs> I understand. You think people are listening to you and judging you silently behind your back? I have anxiety, that's one of the symptoms. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> conspiracy theories are always just thinking the world is gonna end. It's just pessimism. <laughs> What's the alternative? That people are good and things are gonna work out? <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> Optimism is the ultimate conspiracy theory. <laughs> like, have you had someone tell you the secret? Like, the more positive energy you put out into the universe, the more positive things you get back. It's fake news. <laughs> it's not real. But if someone's like, you know, there's a group of Illuminati lizard people ruining your life, I'm like, tell me more. That makes sense. <laughs> Certainly this can't all be my fault. <laughs> I get it, you wanna hear what you wanna hear. Like, I went to two therapists before I landed on the therapist I go to now because the first two were not telling me what I wanted to hear at all. <laughs> they didn't seem smart. They're like, maybe you need to grow up, maybe you need to let things go. I'm like, I don't like these mainstream media lies. <laughs> And the therapist I see now, he's like, I think this is your parents' fault. I'm like, yeah, there we go. That makes sense to me. I've had my suspicions for a while. That's how you know you got a good therapist. They're just mad at your parents for no reason. You walk in there, that's the first thing they ask you. They're like, let me guess, you got parents? I'm like, how did you know? I'm a doctor. <laughs> my therapist, he hates my dad. He's never met him, it's so funny. <laughs> I invited my therapist to a show, and after the show, he came up to me, he's like, did your dad show up? I'm like, no. 
my typical. <laughs> typical dad. <laughs> he hates him. <laughs> and it took me a while to admit something kind of vulnerable to him, which is that uh, I'm a parent too. <laughs> looked at me like, you traitorous piece of garbage. <laughs> I'm just trying not to mess up my kid, though. You know, that's why I go to therapy. I actually told my parents what my therapist said. I'm like, you know, my therapist said you messed me up. And they just went, oh, we knew that. <laughs> but they gave me some good parenting advice. They said this, they said, look, we know he messed you up. We just love you, and when you care about someone, you end up messing them up a little bit. But we did mess you up less than how much our parents messed us up. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay, that makes me feel better. I didn't know the bar was so low. <laughs> That's the lowest possible bar you can overcome, is to be better than your parents. That's why whenever parents become parents, they all of a sudden start saying that thing where they're like, you kids, you have it good. You have no idea how bad I had it. Because the further back in time you go, the worse the parents were. That's why the evolution chart looks like that. It's just kids getting beat down by their parents the further back in time you go. You kids have it good. My dad was a monkey. <laughs> you have no idea how bad I had it. <laughs> and I think that's why we're kind of messed up. We feel messed up. We still got some leftover monkey in us. <laughs> I just feel like a monkey all the time. I'm just trying to suppress it. <laughs> Don't you? <laughs> Part monkey. Don't you have an itch in your butt right now? <laughs> You're trying not to scratch it. Just so you don't look like a monkey in front of all these people. But as soon as you're alone, you're gonna go full monkey. <laughs> it's always our impulse, is monkey. Whenever someone talks to me too close, and I can see inside their mouth and they're just like, Bitcoin, Bitcoin, Bitcoin. I go, I wanna throw poop in your face. Get away from me. You don't do it. You're better than your monkey parents. It's, it's good that people listen. Like, my name is Alex, in case you forgot. And we got an Alexa in my house. And my wife was really worried that the Alexa was listening to everything. And I think it's just because they gave Alexa a woman's name. Right? If it was called Alex, she'd be like, oh yeah, Alex is not listening. <laughs> zoned out about five topics ago. <laughs> Alexa just started saying things that I say. It's like, I'm sorry, I didn't get that. Can you repeat that? I'm having a hard time with the connection at the moment. I think it's insulting to call Alexa a woman. Women are way too smart to be compared to Alexa. Like, women are actual artificial intelligence. <laughs> you can process thousands of pieces of information at the same time and have a grudge about all of them. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> Men's brains work way more like Alexa. We're just a simple speech recognition call and response <laughs> software. We're just kind of waiting around to hear our name. <laughs> give you just enough information to make you think we were listening to you. <laughs> Lately, my Alexa's just been ghosting my wife. <laughs> She'll talk, it won't respond. And I feel like I have to stand up for the Alexa. 
She's like, why won't the Alexa listen to me? I'm like, I think it's just because you're saying a lot. Like, <laughs> right in a row, and you never pause when you talk. You gotta pause. Because maybe Alexa's trying to process the last five things you asked it. You just go from topic to topic, and it makes it hard for us. I mean her. She's like, that's what Alexa thinks. I'm like, yeah, Alexa thinks that. If Alexa was really a woman, you wouldn't even have to talk to it. She would just talk to you. You'd walk by unprompted, be like, hey, I have a couple things for you to do. And are you listening to me? I don't care about getting my identity stolen. I don't care. I'd be curious to see what someone could do with my identity if they weren't burdened by my personality. They should have to steal the personality with the identity. It'd make me feel better. I'd be like, yeah, they got my credit card, but I know they're not making eye contact with anyone. Very awkward person. The problem I've found with being awkward is not that you don't know when you're being awkward. You know. It's just that your brain gives you no better options. I am so jealous of stupid people. Have you seen them? They look so happy. They'll just leave a train wreck of a conversation they just had with this face like, I totally nailed that. <laughs> and they didn't. And I know exactly how badly I'm doing at all times and I can't stop it from happening. <laughs> like, have you done this? I do this all the time. Have you been telling someone a story and you realize in the middle of the story that you're like, oh no, the end of this story is not interesting at all. <laughs> And you finish telling the story, your friend has anticipation in their eyes and you know you have nothing. You're gonna have to apologize for speaking at the end of this. Like, I'm sorry, I thought that story was going somewhere myself. I'll get back to you. My friend told me a story about how he went to a restaurant and the waiter had to give someone the Heimlich maneuver. It's a crazy story. So I started telling him my story about how I went to a restaurant. And in the middle of telling it, I realized that the grand finale to my story was basically, I had a waiter also one time. <laughs> and that's the end of that story. <laughs> Not worried about identity theft. I think it's interesting the things we use to protect our identity. Like, sometimes you just use your name and birthday. I'm like, well, I don't know why you use the birthday. It's supposed to be like a happy day, but whenever you go to the doctor to get your testosterone test results back. <laughs> this is just a random example. <laughs> Say you went in for a previous testosterone test and your results came back just shockingly low. So, gotta go in for a follow-up. Just hoping against hope you don't have to take drugs to stay your own gender. Just fingers crossed that you're not a woman who identifies as a man trapped in a man's body. Way too confusing even to explain to yourself. That's sensitive information. You wouldn't want that to get out there. Especially to a group of people you don't know and certainly millions of people who will view this on the internet. And all they ask you to verify that you are who you are is your name and birthday. 
I'm like, I tell Baskin Robbins that every year <laughs> for my free pint of ice cream. I don't like that Baskin Robbins has access to my testosterone test results. <laughs> get my birthday pint of ice cream, and they're like, ooh, you sure you want to be eating ice cream at a time like this? <laughs> it's gonna go right to your bosoms, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Even the questions they ask you when you like reset your password online, those aren't that personal. It's always like, what high school did you go to? What's your favorite band? I tell people that all the time. There's no one listening to me. <laughs> they need to ask you questions that are even more personal. Questions you don't even want to answer. <laughs> Only if you're honest with yourself. <laughs> questions that if people knew that about you, they wouldn't even want to steal your identity. <laughs> Insecurity questions. <laughs> Questions like, why do you have a hard time with intimacy? <laughs> Where do you think your trust issues come from? And on what day will you forgive your father? <laughs> By the end of the quiz, you're just crying. <laughs> your password's not strong enough. <laughs> I'm not strong enough. I don't care. I don't care about identity theft. I'll give my phone number to whoever. I'm a member of many loyalty programs. <laughs> I'll tell you something. I've got 20,000 7-Eleven loyalty points. <laughs> yeah. You should be more impressed. <laughs> and it's just because you don't know the conversion rate. <laughs> Here it is. You gotta spend one dollar at 7-Eleven to earn one point. Yeah. There you go. Thank you. I'm getting my proper shrift. I'm good at math. That's enough for a down payment on a house in 2017. And guess what? I've never redeemed any of the points. You wanna know why? Every time I walk into any 7-Eleven and I go to the register, the cashier is always like, huh, you have 20,000 points. <laughs> and I like getting that kind of respect. <laughs> it makes me feel like an Old West outlaw coming into a new town where my reputation has preceded me. <laughs> Put my Diet Coke on the counter. 44 ounce, it's the third one of the day. <laughs> the lady at the counter, she says, do you have a loyalty number with us? And I just chuckle to myself. I say, this must be your first day. <laughs> well, yes, I do have a loyalty number with you, ma'am. It's uh, 801-638-3940. It's my actual phone number. <laughs> Use it at 7-Eleven to get me points. <laughs> Don't redeem any or I'll hunt you down and kill you. <laughs> and the lady at the counter, she puts my number in her computer. And I see her face as my account comes up. She goes, oh my stars. <laughs> I'd heard tell the legend of you, but I didn't reckon it was true. <laughs> I just humbly tip my hat and I go, you better believe it, little lady. <laughs> they call me the big gulp kid. <laughs> and she says, well, you should redeem some points, mister. You got 20,000. I reckon you have enough to get the taquito. <laughs> you could have the single taquito that's been rolling on our grill since Tuesday last. <laughs> and I 
say, I don't do it for the taquitos, ma'am. I don't do it for that dusty hot dog you got on there neither. That hot dog looks like it's been through some travails. <laughs> In many ways, that, that hot dog reminds me a lot of myself. <laughs> Always rolling along, but never seeming to move forward. <laughs> Discarded by everyone and dangerously dehydrated. <laughs> Truth be told, ma'am, if I wanted to redeem any points, I'd have to use your app, and I forgot my password a long time. No, oh, ma'am, I don't do it to get no reward from 7-Eleven. I just give my loyalty to y'all, because I love you. I offer my love for free. <laughs> At this point, no one in the 7-Eleven has a dry eye. Everyone <laughs> is crying a single tear. They're moved by my loyalty. And the lady says, well, how can we ever repay you? I just go, well, I reckon one day I'll have enough points to buy this here establishment. <laughs> Believe you me, I will be its benevolent proprietor. <laughs> But if you'll excuse me, I must hit the road. I've got a kidney stone I need to pass. <laughs> Thanks very much, everyone.